दो मिनट बस वी आर लाइव नाउ डॉक्टर ओके मंजुला थैंक यू Uh, so good evening respected seniors colleagues and uh, all the wonderful and dynamic residents who have logged in today it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all in this uh, fourth edition of the master class of the online pg teaching program which we have named kaksha uh, kaksha as we all know is a novel pg teaching program envisioned by ros uh, which will cover all the major topics over a period of uh, one and a half to two years of the current curriculum of postgraduate ophthalmology residency program uh we'll be bringing the best of the national and uh, and state faculty to share their expertise and knowledge and interact with you the residents also are encouraged to put forward all their queries and doubts in a fearless manner in the chat box uh coming to this class uh we have today with us professor pankaj sharma sir from sms medical college jaipur to enlighten us about one of the most uh, uh, most important diagnostic modality of our times that is corneal topography which i personally feel that every ophthalmologist should know uh, the basics of irrespective of the sub specialty he or uh, she is practicing i will now invite dr sunil kaliya associate professor sms medical college department of ophthalmology who is going to moderate today's class and to introduce the panelist in a very brief manner and start the class over to sunil very good evening to everyone and thank you vishal sir for the premature promotion also i'm uh, still assistant professor <laughs> so um, i'm for the kaksha series i'm extremely thankful to the ros executive and the panel that is joining us today i want to extend a warm welcome to the ros president the ros president elect secretary and chairman scientific committee also um, i would like to introduce the students who are joining us for the hot seat there is dr kavita gehnolia from sms there is dr sunil bishnoi from snmc jodhpur dr siddhi mathur also from snmc jodhpur Dr. Mena Bidyasir from R N T Medical College. Now, without further ado, I would request today's speaker, uh, Professor Pankaj Sharma sir, who is a uh, not just a prolific surgeon, he is also a passionate teacher, and his name has been synonymous with the excellent PG treatment teaching at S M S over the years. So we see a very successful role model in you. Over to you for teaching uh, the interfaces of corneal topography. thank you dr sonal thank you dr vishal and uh, good evening everybody and this is excellent series which has been started by ros and especially with the hard work of uh, dr vishal i think without uh, wasting much time i should go to the presentation and uh, this... any of the doubts i will uh, i will uh, uh, keep noting if you people can write it on the chat box yes so i would encourage it if you have any doubt you just put it on the chat box and dr sonal will read it and then uh, we will discuss it as and when the uh, gap comes in the um, there are two uh, two you know grand quiz questions at the end of the class you stay back till the end and you will win uh, you know all those gadgets and which sonal is planning i uh, will give it and the sponsor is kachi uh, and tot pharmaceuticals and but those questions will not be put in the middle of the class they will be at the end of the class so read and maybe the questions are from the presentation itself so you have to concentrate on the class for it yes so today we will be discussing about corneal topography and tomography why and how why because it is of great clinical significance not just for the corneal surgeons but for the cataract surgeons for anybody who uh, wants to give perfect vision to the patient and how is uh, is the machines which are uh, very daunting uh, they are uh, you know everybody is scared of so many uh, things that come out of the m- m- machine how to interpret the corneal topography i have no financial disclosures because uh, i'll be speaking about uh, these uh, g- g- gadgets and everything but i have no financial interest in any now corneal topography what what is the basic shape of the cornea topography means uh, for like for people who study surfaces like even the earth surface you have mountains gorges and it's a irregular surface so cornea itself is a round surface so but it is not a perfect sphere cornea is a prolate uh, sphere which means the central part of the cornea is more curved then the peripheral periphery as you go to the periphery it becomes flatter 
this is the normal cornea which is uh, uh, which we have uh, and this is known as the prolate cornea and this eccentricity is no uh, is measured by in millimeters 0.4 to 0.6 uh, not millimeters but microns so this eccentricity is what the perfect sphere would be somewhere over here the eccentricity is that it is getting flatter but since it is not a line it is a, an area of the cornea so the square of this value is more important and more representative of the eccentricity so the asphericity is denoted with a q value and that q is the square of the eccentricity now this square the minus sign denotes that it is prolate that means it is flatter at the periphery a perfect sphere is the central one and oblate is flatter in the center but more curved in the periphery so this eccentricity would be uh, this q value would be plus over here and it is minus in a prolate cornea the normal prolateness or the q value of the cornea ranges from minus 0.26 to minus 0.42 now the most important confusion in uh, uh, students is how come that the cornea is flatter in the periphery but still it is positively aspheric which means there is a positive spherical aberration now to understand that we have to superimpose all these things this white line is the spherical ideal spherical surface cornea since it is flatter in the periphery it is prolate so this is going flatter in the periphery both sides so q value becomes minus okay however if the q value is zero the natural tendency of any lens is of any converging lens is as you can see the central rays are coming perp almost perpendicular but as you go to the periphery these peripheral rays are falling at an angle with the lens this induces a prismatic effect more periphery you go the more prismatic effect comes so these peripheral rays are deviated more that means the power of the lens in the periphery of a spherical lens is more even if this sphere it is a part of a perfect sphere so when the q value is zero that is it's a perfect sphere there is high positive asphericity that is the natural error in any lens okay so in this case when this q value is zero if the cornea was a perfect spherical surface it would be very highly positively aspheric because the peripheral rays would get deviated much more this gets a bit flatter as it becomes flatter it the the positive asphericity decreases however with a q value of minus 0.3 it is still positively aspheric if it goes further flatter let's say it goes to point minus 0.8 at that point the positive asphericity can be zero so that is the uh, difference one has to uh, keep in mind that with a negative q value there is still some residual positive asphericity asfer asfer inducing a positive spherical aberration which means that even if the cornea is flatter in the periphery it is more powerful in the periphery despite being flatter because of the inherent nature of any lens so this thing has to be clear in your mind because this is the biggest confusion in students how come a cornea is getting flatter in the periphery still it is positively aspheric now why shine flu we have basically two types of uh, topographs in which we see uh, the shape of the cornea the topography of the cornea basically the uh, one which we have been used to using over the years since the inception of keratometers and everything was a placido disk based which means that some rings are projected on the anterior surface of the cornea and how this image is formed is recorded and from that the curvature of the cornea is uh, uh, then uh, calculated 
Now, to understand why we need to do a tomography, tomography is not just top topography, not the surface only. It goes into the depth also. What is the posterior surface of the cornea? What is the angle in the cornea? What is the iris lens? So tomography is like a cut section, three-dimensional. So if you give a spectacle to an ophthalmologist and you ask him, how, uh, what is the power of this lens? Now, can anyone tell me what this top thing is? Any of the students? What is this instrument? Yes, Dr. Pooja? Yes, Dr. Pooja. Lensometer. So lensometer. Yes. Lensometer. So you can mute your. Uh, uh, now anybody else who can tell me what this uh, instrument below is. This is also somehow finding the power of the spectacle lens. Anybody? What is the name of this instrument? This is not used by ophthalmologist. This is used by optometrist. This is a Geneva lens measure. So an ophthalmologist will just put the lens in the photometer, and he'll tell you, this is the power of the lens. Maybe also the centration, but if you give a lens to an optometrist, he will tell you what is the anterior surface curvature. He'll tell you what the posterior curvature is. He will tell you what is the thickness of the lens. He will tell you the overall diameter of the lens. He will also tell you the centration and if there's any, any shape transitions. So an optometrist will do a tomography, which means he, he can tell you, he can tell you the actual lens performance and he can duplicate the lens. Whereas an ophthalmologist will just tell you the total power. Tomography, just a uh, topography, the placido disc just gives the total power. And that is also an, just an estimation, a rough simulation. Whereas a tomography gives the actual performance of the cornea. So next is the concept of simulated K. Now simulated, simulated, anybody can tell me what simulated means, simulation? What is the meaning of simulation? Something which is not real, okay? So something which is not real is simulated. So simulated K is what we have been uh, measuring over these years with the keratometer, with the auto ref, with all these things, we are only measuring a simulation of the corneal power. This is not the true corneal power. So how, how that, that is done is by this formula of the refractive index of the second surface minus the refractive index of the first surface, light divided by the radius of curvature gives the diopteric power, radius of curvature in meters. So this is air, this is the cornea, air is one, corneal refractive index is 1.375, aqueous is like water, 1.33. So when the ray go, goes from uh, air to the cornea, it is 1.375 minus one, and the anterior radius of curvature of the cornea of anterior surface is 7.8 millimeters, which is 0 0.0078 meters. This value comes to be 48 diopters. Now this ray goes from this convex surface from a denser to a rarer medium because 1.375 is dense and this is rare. So this will become reverse 1.33 minus 1.375, this power and the posterior corneal surface is 6.7 millimeters. So this power is minus six. So you add these two and you get uh, somewhere around 43 diopters. Now, but you, we all know that when you measure the corneal uh, power with a placido disc based keratometers, it only takes the anterior surface. It does not go to the posterior surface because it just takes the anterior surface. The Myers are projected, the Myers are measured and you get the power. So how come just from the anterior surface, it gets the posterior, the total power? It is by using this assumed uh, refractive index. In all the machines, the refractive index, which has been fed is not 1.375, but 
3375, which is less than 1.375. See, so 13 is inserted over here, which means that the overall power is actually coming to 43, which is the rough estimation of the true power. So what is the basic assumption in simulated K is that the posterior surface and the anterior surface are parallel and the cornea is very thin. If the cornea is thick and the posterior surface is not conforming to the anterior surface, this gets haywire. Um, can anybody tell me any disease name in which the posterior surface, the cornea gets affected and it is not conforming with the anterior surface? Anybody? Posterior keratoconus. Yes. So a keratoconus is a disease which starts with the posterior surface. All your topographs will miss uh, early keratoconus because it is starting at the posterior surface and it is just assuming that the posterior surface is normal. So that is why a shine flu imaging is always better than a conventional topograph. A topograph you, you can get for three to four lakhs, but a shine flu camera and uh, with the dedicated software you will get from anywhere beyond 35 lakhs. That is why because it is a proprietary and it is uh, it has got a very high uh, sensitive camera and I'll just tell you what it has. Now simulated K which we measure is with either auto ref keratometer. It gives you the K with a Bosch and Lom keratometer or with a, a placido disc uh, uh, topographs. Now with this, uh, you what are the problems with simulated K? Problems are it is based on the assumption, first of all. So it misses the posterior corneal diseases. Second and very important is it needs an intact tear film because the Myers are there. The Myers are projected on the cornea. And from on the cornea, this, this whatever image of the Myers are made, that is recorded with the camera. So if you don't have an intact tear film, even if the cornea is all right, the, it has a dry uh, eye, the uh, Myers will not be formed and you will not be able to do uh, topography. There is a central blind spot. Now for that, like in this center part, there is a camera over here. In the central part, the tube where you view, and also in this, if you see from the other side of uh, auto ref keratometer, there is a central camera, which actually sees a new uh, records the Myers. Now, when there is a central camera, it will not record the dead center of the cornea. There's always a central blind spot. It misses the central cornea. So what it is calculating is a usually a two to four millimeter area of the mid peripheral cornea, which means not at the dead center. So the dead center cornea is missed. It measures, it is usually three millimeter diameter area, which is, uh, which is the K value which comes. But actually, the visual axis through which the the axis through the which the visual axis passes that center point of the cornea is missed. Also, it misses the peripheral cornea because, however large or however uh, Myers are there, the cornea is so much highly powered that even if you have twenty two or thirty Myers or uh, thirty placido rings it will not reach up to the periphery of the cornea. So the peripheral cornea is always missed and the central cornea is also missed. It gives just an area from two to three millimeters up to um, at the most seven to eight millimeter diameter cornea. The rest is all it cannot measure. So what is the shine flu principle? Now, shine flu principle means that instead of seeing what image is forming from the anterior corneal surface, we take photographs. A high speed rotating, high re resolution infrared camera is used and it takes photographs and it rotates and it takes the photograph of all around the cornea. Now, what is the problem in taking photographs is the central part of the cornea is nearer to the camera and the limbus is away from the cornea. So jab ye wala part, when this part of the cornea is closer and this is a way, how can you focus everything in one shot? So 
uh, to understand that, we have to understand who started this uh, Scheinflu principle. It was Theodore Scheinflu. He was a cartograph. Now, cartograph is a person who makes aerial maps, contour maps of the earth. Kaha mountain hai, kaha valley hai. What he, when he used to go in a hot air balloon, he used to take photographs. And he used to see that the peripheral part of the photograph was distorted. It was out of focus. Uh, for example, if you take a book and you put it at a very oblique angle, when you start reading it, the central part will be in focus. The part which is away from you and which is very close to you will be out of focus. This is the distortion or this is the uh, out of focus because the image plane and the object plane are not in the same line. They are not parallel. The subject plane is like this, image plane is like this. So for that, he devised a principle in which you tilt the lens also. And you tilt the lens so much, just enough, so that these three planes they intersect at the shine flu intersect. They intersect at one point. At this point, this image will be sharp and it will be without any distortion. So in this uh, shine flu camera, if you see, you have uh, this camera rotates all around, takes photographs. And this is slightly tilted. This is slightly tilted in the shine flu angle. So everything is then uh, in sharp focus from the limbus to the center. Everything is in sharp focus. So, so what does it, uh, uh, Placido disc based measures the slope because where the Myers are very closely placed. So it interprets that there is a speaker on it. Please mute yourself. Somebody's speaker is on. Uh, mic is on, sorry. Okay. So in a Placido disc uh, based, where Myers pass pass hongi, there steep cornea. Where Myers dur dur hai, there flat cornea. So it just measures the slope. In a shine flu, it measures the actual point. This point hai kaha in space. This is point is in front of this and how much in front it measures because of the high resolution infrared camera. So this is what is a shine flu measure and this is what Placido disc measures. Now coming to the aberrations, what is the meaning of aberration? Cornea is not a perfect sphere. So there are some aberrations. It is going off track or deviating the true meaning, the literal meaning of aberration. So it is a difference that exists between the ideal image that we would expect to see when luminous rays are refracted in a perfect optical system and what we actually achieve. When the uh, rays of light, they pass through an optical system, if the optical system is perfect, then the image will be, which is formed will be a direct replica of the object. Not just its uh, size and shape, its uh, contrast is luminosity and its uh, sharpness. So that is studied, uh, we'll see uh, afterwards in the end, point spread function and modular transfer function, how much it is transferred from the uh, object to the image. That is how we uh, know how much perfection is there in the optical system. And it was quantitatively described by Zernike's polynomials. So these aberrations are basically two in the cornea. One is chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is very simple. When there's a prism and light uh, enters the prism from the other side, there is a spectrum is formed, which means that the uh, blue uh, uh, rays which have the shortest wavelength they are deviated most and the red wavelength are deviated least uh, inverse vibior is formed that is the inherent uh, aberration in any lens system ki jo shorter wavelength hai wo jyada refract hongi larger wavelength kam refract hongi 
sorry yeah yeah shorter wavelengths is the blue which uh, deviate more this usually cannot be corrected it is an inherent flaw in any lens system and it can be decreased to some extent by achromatic lenses achromatic lenses kya hote hain jisme is tarah se some uh, they have got some uh, arrangement of two lenses in which the achromatic uh, the uh, chromatic abrasion neutralizes from one lens to the other so uh, but still you cannot uh, uh, make uh, chromatic abrasion go all together it is there in cornea also the other abrasions which can be dealt are the monochromatic which means each uh, uh, wavelength of light will have its uh, abrasion which have the low order abrasion and the high order low order are the spherical refractive error and cylindrical refractive error the defocus and astigmatism and higher order are uh, they are described by the zernike's polynomials the first order abrasion is just a prism effect or a tilt if you have just the image is shifting but it is sharp it is first order second order abrasion are the abrasion which we have they have with the rule as against the rule astigmatism or a defocus just a sphere a spherical or a astigmatic error third order order abrasion is the angle of oblique incidence which means the light either uh, which doesn't come perpendicular but comes from an angle it forms a coma uh, or uh, the point is spread into a coma so that is uh, based on the x and y axis so that is third order third order abrasion third order abrasions are not clinically significant because you cannot do much about it the important thing is fourth order abrasion which is the spherical abrasion spherical abrasion is that what we talked that the kisi bhi positive uh, lens mein the peripheral part of the lens is more uh, uh, div- uh, converging than the central part of the lens then you have tetrafoil in which x y z all three are affected and tertiary astigmatism is something which we use in a Uh, when we use uh, w- when we do uh, refraction subjective verification if you remember with a cross cylinder tertiary astigmatism can anybody tell me what a tertiary astigmatism in it is and how it, it is used in a cross cylinder refraction pe ho chuki hai class tertiary astigmatism anybody see tertiary astigmatism primary astigmatism is the astigmatism in the optical system itself jaise aankh ke andar we require a plus 1.5 diopter cylinder at 90 degrees ye iski primary astigmatism secondary is the correcting cylinder which we put we put 1.5 at 90 degrees and it gets neutralized and the tertiary astigmatism is zero but if we put that's correcting cylinder instead of 90 we put it at 100 degrees okay humne galat laga diya so ab uska astigmatism kya hoga us optical system ka that would be the tertiary astigmatism and that will be somewhere totally at a different angle not between 90 and 100 it will be somewhere around 35 and 40 so that is tertiary astigmatism then you have fifth to 10th order abrasion but they are not clinically significant they are only significant in a widely dilated pupil so what we are concerned is the second order abrasion which is the spherical and astigmatic errors and fourth order in which most important is positive uh, spherical aberration or the um, the peripheral part of of the lens of the cornea become uh, which is more positive so tomography why do we need to do this uh, detailed study of the cornea now if anybody asks you why we need to do corneal corneal tomography don't go directly to that we need it for laser refractive surgery no the main uh, use of tomography is for diagnosis of corneal diseases and as we all know the most important disease is keratoconus that is the primary aim of corneal tomography to detect early keratoconus because now we can do something about it there was a time when we 
we didn't have any treatment for keratoconus, we can freeze it with cross-linking. Then other diseases like uh, PMCD. What is PMCD? Anybody? Yes, corneal degeneration, keratoglobus. Then you have Terian's degeneration, corneal opacities, corneal faceting. So any changes in the cornea, you, uh, you can diagnose. Then, yes, obviously for laser refractive surgeries as a precursor to know the uh, aberrations on the cornea, you need to do a corneal tomography. Then very important is premium IOL implantations. So if you know the how much positively aspheric the cornea is, you can match it with your negative aspheric IOL. For toric, you can know the actual uh, total uh, astigmatism because with placido disc based, you only get astigmatism of the anterior surface. For multifocal IOL, you have to know the uh, performance of the central 3 mm of the cornea, a diameter of central 3 millimeters. So for that, we will we'll go to that uh, RMS value, which is very important. For multifocal toric, the same thing. And for phakic IOL, you can actually see how much uh, the gap is there between the iris and the lens for putting the IOL. You can also do the white to white and the horizontal visible iris diameter that you can do. So this is the, the, these are the uses. Now, what I initially told you was that shine flu in shine flu imaging, what is the primary data? Wo machine read kya karti? It, it just reads how much anterior or posterior that particular point is relative to other points in the cornea. So it measures elevations bus. From these elevations, it calculates the slope and the power or the curvature. In Placido disc, it, the primary uh, data which comes out is slope. From there, it uh, goes back and just creates elevation and a curvature. So what is an elevation subtraction map? So this black line line, dark line, that is the cornea. It is prolate because it is the center is very much curved. As you go to the periphery, it is less curved, flat. This light line is the perfect spherical surface. Okay. So the, since this part is more curved, this is anteriorly elevated. So this is anterior elevations. This part is going behind the cornea, behind this best fit sphere. So it is below. So the part of the cornea, which is above this reference sphere is red. The part which is behind it is blue. This is cheese ko apne mind mein bilkul pakka kar lo. Jo uska reference sphere hai, usse ka cornea, if it goes back, then it is Blue, if it is above that reference point, it is red. So this is an elevation subtraction map. This values sari minus me aengi, microns, ye wali sari values plus microns me aengi. Okay. So with that thing in mind, why do we need a best fit sphere? So to understand that, let's see. This is Stockholm elevation, a distance of, of Stockholm from the center of the earth. Mexico City from the center of the earth, Dead Sea from the center of the earth, and Mount Everest. If you measure everything from the center of the earth, all look same. You cannot make out any difference. But if you take the sea level as the reference point, you can see how much difference they are. Stockholm is almost at sea level. Mexico City is about 6,000. Dead Sea is gone below, and Mount Everest is there. So this difference is highlighted if you take a reference as a sea level. So that is what a shine flu does. It takes, it creates a reference level and from there it takes elevations and depressions. So either it can be a best fit sphere or it can create a toric ellipsoid. What is a toric ellipsoid? It, it is a astigmatic surface, astigmatic uh, best fit. 
मतलब वो एक एस्टिकमेटिक सरफेस बना देगा और उसके ऊपर वो उसको सुपर इम्पोज करेगा ठीक है ना सो दिस थिंग आई थिंक एवरीबडी इज अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज अ बेस्ट फिट स्फियर एंड वाई वी नीड इट इन अ टोपोग्राफ सो हेयर कम्स द फर्स्ट एलिवेशन मैप दिस इज विद पेंटकैन नाउ एज यू कैन सी दिस इज के वन एंड के टू एंड दिस इज द रेडियस ऑफ कर्वेचर of horizontal vertical or you can uh, call it the flat or the steep this is the axis the first axis is of the first value okay this is the astigmatism difference between k1 and k2 this is the km this is the mean of these two this is the q value so everything is very clear in this here the the best fit you can see that the elevations front a uh, bfs of 8.13 so you can see the actual uh, radius of curvature is 8.05 to 8 it takes slightly flatter than that so that you uh, have more of elevations and anything which is elevated comes to the uh, fore because these are sagittal maps sagittal means a generalized map hota hai cornea center mein to zyada hi curved hoga na this is the elevation back 6.53 is the best fit sphere this you don't nobody needs to enter these best, best fit sphere the machine calculates which would be the best fit sphere for this case and then it creates these elevations okay so this is the basic elevation map now one thing you have to understand is elevation map of keratoconus is different from elevation map of simple astigmatism regular astigmatism हम रेड को ज्यादा स्टीप से यूजली रिलेट करते हैं विद अ हाई पावर स्टीपर एंड रेड ओके बट इफ देर इज एस्टिकमेटिज्म इसको ऐसे समझो दिस एक्सेस इज वेरी स्टीप ओके सो बेस्ट फिट स्फियर से पीछे चली जाएगी ठीक है ना सो दिस द स्टीप एक्सेस जो है वो पेरिफ्री में जाके ब्लू हो जाएगी can you understand isme now you can see that this is the steep axis okay center mein to best fit sphere ke upar hai as it goes to the periphery it goes behind the best fit sphere because it is steeper steeper from here this is the flatter axis as it goes to the periphery ye wo best fit sphere ke aage aa jayegi this is a typical picture of an astigmatic cornea regular astigmatism and this red is the flatter meridian this is the steeper meridian as you can see here ye samajh mein aa gaya blue is flatter red is steeper theek hai but actual jo color isme aayega this would be the steep axis because in the periphery it has gone behind the best fit sphere this is the actual which we which i have taken uh, from our pentacam here you can see for example k1 is 39.8 k2 is 44.7 okay so and k1 is at 10 degrees so 10 degrees it is 39.8 and 100 degrees it is 44.7 so why this getting blue over here because the axis which is going from here the sphere which is going from here to periphery it is going behind the best fit sphere because it is more steep piche chala gaya wo zyada curve ho gaya the anterior curvature 8.48 radius of curvature of uh, one axis the other radius of curvature is 7.5 the steeper one come the smaller radius will have a larger a uh, higher power so it takes about average of these two and it creates a best fit sphere of 8.13 you can see here and it gives this sort of a picture this doesn't mean that there is ectasia over here no this is just an astigmatism if if i click on instead of uh, i click on toric ellipsoid over here see what happens i have clicked on toric ellipsoid this pentacam it creates an a toric surface and then it creates the elevation over it and then everything becomes normal 
because it creates a, a regular astigmatic surface. So if you take a toric ellipsoid of the same thing, it, everything will be normal. So this is to understand that what a best fit sphere and a best fit toric ellipsoid is. This is a best, best fit toric, toric ellipsoid. And this tells us that this is a regular astigmatism, no ectasia. Now take, for example, a case of keratoconus, just for you know understanding the principle of elevation. Now here, cornea is all right, but in this area, it is above the best fit sphere, in this area, a localized area. So here it is more curved. It is above, it is from in the center part. So this is keratoconus because this is not a, a pattern of astigmatism. It is a localized area of elevation. This is red hot area. But when you take the simulated case, gives you 42, 45 as if it's an astigmatism. But actually it is just a generalized picture of 42 and 45, what is known as the sagittal map. Now, if I click, this is the best fit sphere only, but if I click on toric ellipsoid in this case, it doesn't give change much of the picture and becomes more confusing. Toric ellipsoid, it, it was like this, it becomes like this, as compared to this and this. So why I'm going into detail of this is, in pentacam, elevations are al along the best fit sphere. In the other shine flu, which is the serious, it takes best fit toric ellipsoids always. So the elevations of a serious are not equatable with elevations of pentacam. Now coming to the basic maps, first is a sagittal map. Sagittal map is a generalized map. Generalized means oh, K1, K2, it calculates the K1 and K2 in the central area. And then from that, it uh, assumes that uh, the, this is the refractive index simulated K, and this should be the sagittal map, it is a generalized map. It will not show small uh, changes in the corneal contour. It's very important hota hai if the, this bow tie or astigmatic bow tie, which is formed, whether it is skewed or it is uh, asymmetric. Here you can see that is the lo lower part is very large and upper part is very small. And also they are not in one straight line. So skewed radial axis and this bow tie, which is uh, asymmetric. So this could be case of keratoconus, but sagittal map is just a generalized map. Here you have all these things, uh, the same thing which I have described. Second is the tangential map. Now tangential map means it does not take the generalized picture. It calculates the corneal part individu individual points through by the Snell's law. Snell's law is through ray trace. So is point pe is ki 44 diopter hai, is point pe 42.9 It is calculating the individual uh, 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 the power of the cornea. So this calculates the tangent at each point. This is the tangent. That's why it's known as tang tangential map. Tangential map are not very useful because they are very confusing, but they are important if they, you have a localized uh, defect in the cornea. For example, if you have a small corneal opacity, which is causing flattening, if you have a uh, pellucid marginal degeneration, which is called a localized inferior thinning with ectasia, you can study the tangential maps. Okay, but they are in generally not of very much important significance. Then we have the true net power map. This is important because this is the extra thing which we get from topography, uh, tomography. It calculates the anterior power of the cornea. It calculates the posterior power, posterior surface power, and then it adds up the two, and then it creates this map. So this, in a normal cornea, the sagittal and true net power map will be almost same. However, if the posterior corneal uh, cornea does not conform with the anterior cornea, 
there will be a marked difference between the true net power map and the sagittal map because sagittal to generalized hai true net power uska har point pe anterior and posterior ko add karke aa raha hai the difference between a true net power map and a sagittal map is what is known as kpd keratometric power deviation which is also an important finding in keratoconus because wo एक जनरलाइज्ड टोपोग्राफी से जो के रीडिंग आ रही है और एक एक्चुअल उस पॉइंट की एंटीरियर और पोस्टीरियर से निकल के आ रही है उनमें अगर ज्यादा डिफरेंस होगा तो दैट मींस इट्स अ कैरेटोकोनस दिस इज अ ट्रू नेट पावर मैप देन यू हैव अ पैकीमेट्रिक मैप बेसिक फोर मैप्स हैं सेजिटल एंटीरियर एलिवेशन पोस्टीरियर एलिवेशन एंड पैकीमेट्रिक मैप दीज आर द फोर बेसिक मैप्स विच वी स्टडी वी कैन हैव सो मेनी अदर मैप्स ऑल्सो now this pachymetric map is actual thickness of the cornea at so many points there are about uh, 25000 points with a pentacam normal with a high resolution more than 1 lakh points which are mapped iska pachymetry yahan par hai at the pupil center there is a plus sign over here 532 so ye 532 yahan par hai pachy pachy at the apex apex of the cornea is 533 it is right here near the three it is not visible very clearly thinnest local the thinnest cornea is 530 kahan pe it's over here this is the thinnest cornea now the pachy apex at the apex of the cornea is always taken as zero x and y coordinates so cartesian coordinates what are cartesian coordinates yahan par jo ye zero hai wahan se ye y axis yahan se x axis these this pupil center and the thinnest local is measured from this apex so ab aap ye now you can see thinnest local it is on the x axis it is minus 0.5 and y axis minus 0.38 so this is the central so minus 0.38 and minus 0.50 x may be minus will get y may be minus so it is somewhere here why is it important in keratoconus this thinning is inferior so actual if this thinnest part is somewhere over here then we can know that there is inferior thinning and here this is the cartesian coordinates x and y then you have k max which is the maximum power corneal volume corneal uh chamber volume anterior chamber angle everything is um, uh, written here. you you even have a uh, with this thickness of the cornea what would be the iop correction factor it is over here one important another important thing is not just thickness of the cornea but how much increase in the thickness is there from the center to the periphery cornea beech mein se sabse thinnest hota hai as you go to the periphery it becomes thicker what is the thickness of central cornea anybody 0.6 what 0.0 km km sir mm mm in microns average 545 micrometer uh, so 545 is in western literature in indian liter literature it's 520 525 indian cornea are thinner so that is the central corneal thickness as you go to the periphery the corneal thickness increases to about 650 okay so peripheral part of the cornea is thicker so this is 5 here it is about 540 530 as you go to the periphery it becomes 650 over here 650 as you this is 2 mm from the center 4 mm from the center 6 mm 8 mm not just uh, and these two lines are the standard deviation of a population if you take the percentage increase how much it is increasing iska slope agar nikalenge to wo aisa aayega and it is even more specific this this distance between the two standard deviation is less now this is important in keratoconus why because there is differential central or paracentral thinning or periphery theek hota hai yahan par to 4 450 reh jayega cornea यहां पर वो 650 होगा तो फ्रॉम हेयर टू देयर देर विल बी अडन इंक्रीज इन थिकनेस गेट इट 
So it looks something like this. It's thin, but it soon becomes normal thickness in the periphery. So which shows that it's thin hai itna cornea and then as soon as it leaves the sec the two, three millimeter area, it becomes normal thickness. So the percentage increase in thickness would be way out of this normal. So this could be keratoconus. So now this thing is used for calculating enhanced ectasia. Bellin Ambrosio, jo hum dekhte hain, ye wala. How do you, uh, ye kaise aati hain ye? Idha seedha koon a jata hai. How it is calculated? Iske liye, I think we have a lot of time. Still, huh? Enhanced ectasia means you are correlating the thickness of the cornea with ectasia. Jab hum uska K1, K2 nikalte hain cornea ka, it is a general from the sagittal map generalized 41 44 or 44 48 pura aa gaya but that generalized picture is also getting distorted by the ectatic area ye jahan pe ectasia ho raha hai yahan par values are like 48 52 56 is area mein okay this is creating a, a very large uh, 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 best fit sphere for the sagittal map okay because wo is area se wo bahut zyada values ja rahi hain so what pentacam does is it takes the thinnest area jo bhi thinnest point hai uske around 3 ya 4 mm area mein jitni bhi values hain unko hata deta hai because they are causing a lot of change in the best fit sphere isko hatate hi what will happen is jo best fit sphere ऐसा था बहुत ज्यादा स्कर्व था वो लेस कर्व हो जाता है ठीक है इससे क्या फर्क पड़ा इससे फर्क ये पड़ा कि वो जो बेस्ट फिट स्फीयर नाउ विल कंफर्म बेटर विद द पेरिफेरल कॉर्निया क्योंकि वो नॉर्मल के ऑलमोस्ट है बाकी पेरिफेरल कॉर्निया तो नॉर्मल ही है बट दिस विल गेट एनहांस दिस एक्टेटिक पार्ट ये ज्यादा एलिवेटेड दिखने लग जाएगा सो दिस इज कोरिलेटिंग दैट thickness the thinness of the cornea with the ectasia so is me kaise hota hai for example this is the front the it is 7.94 best fit sphere and uh, what it takes it is area ke jo values hai unko hata deta hai so instead of taking a 3 mm ki exclude kar di usne theek hai instead of taking a 7.94 best fit sphere it takes 8.01 thoda flatter jaise hi wo ye leta hai this gets enhanced now you can see ye 16 21 17 values 34 28 21 ho gayi theek hai but ye 14 ki 14 rahi ye 3 ki 3 rahi to baki values mein itna change nahi aaya jitna in values mein aa gaya because these values were causing a wrong best best fit sphere और इसको इसमें से ये माइनस करते ही ये बिल्कुल कोन बन जाते हैं। This is the front, this is the back. Back में ज़्यादा है। Similarly, you see 43 becomes 57, but this 20 remains 22, this 8 remains 6, 16 remains 14. So बाकी कॉर्निया सब सेम रहा, बस ये एनहांस हो गया। This is enhanced ectasia or Bellin Ambrosia of Pentacam. Here, this is very much uh, enhanced because it's may 6.63 the usko 6.79 kar diya machine ne, because it's in ye wali high values hata di usme se sagittal map ne se. okay this is advanced keratoconus then uh, what else a pentacam will do it will show you you can compare so ye this was done 2020 this was 2029 2029, 2017. So 17 se leke 2020 three years mein how much change is there? You can subtract D from A and get the A to C kitna difference hai. You can get the difference. It will uh, uh, algebraically subtract one value, each value from the other and give you a difference. This will give a very good uh, depiction of if there is any increase in the ectasia or decrease in the thickness okay so comparative maps 
नाउ सो इसमें क्या क्या देखेंगे कैरेटोकोनस में वी विल सी के वन के टू वी विल सी थिकनेस विच इज द थिनेस पार्ट एंड वेयर इट इज लोकेटेड वी विल सी द के पी डी कैरेटोमेट्रिक पावर डिविएशन एंड वी विल सी द के मैक्स विद दीज थिंग्स वी विल नो दैट देर इज सम दे मे बी सम कैरेटोकोनस बट देन इट इज कन्फर्म विद बेल इन एम्ब्रोजियो उसमें इट विल गिव अ विजुअल इंप्रेशन फॉर द कैरेटोकोनस अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज थिंग्स वन मोर थिंग इज देयर द क्यू वैल्यू अब एक बात अब मैं तुम सबसे पूछूंगा नॉर्मल एक्सेंट्रिसिटी इज सेंटर इज स्टीपर पेरिफरल इज फ्लैटर ठीक है सो वॉट विल हैपन टू द क्यू वैल्यू इन कैरेटोकोनस विल इट बिकम मोर नेगेटिव और लेस नेगेटिव सोच के बताओ More negatives. More negatives, sir. Yes, because central or भी ज़्यादा steep हो गई. Normal Q value is central steep and peripheral flat, and center is becoming even more steep. So this will become more negative. And if you do a myopic surgery in which the central is flattening is there, in which you ablate the central cornea, it will become flat. so this will become less negative or even positive q value okay then there are so many uh, other things are there in uh, uh, for example here k max packy thin progression index minimum mag art there are so many df db then you don't need to memorize everything you just need to have this table and the values these values are only used in doubtful cases and these are the subclinical versus control this is given in every book you can paste this in your wherever you are doing the topography and you can just see whether in doubtful cases whether there is any progression or not one important thing is zernike case analysis which was <coughs> abrasions ab isme kaun si abrasions important thi fourth order and second order ठीक है ना तो फोर्थ ऑर्डर एवरेजन इज दिस टिल्ट वी डोंट नीड एस्टिग्मेटिक एंड डी फोकस सेकेंड ऑर्डर ट्री फॉल वी डोंट कंसर्न कोमा आल्सो देन कम्स द स्फेरिकल एवरेजन दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज पॉजिटिवली स्फेरिकल एवरेज पॉइंट टू सेवन फोर ठीक है ना सो दिस इज पॉइंट टू सेवन फोर दिस एवरेजन इज इन द फोर मिलीमीटर जोन इट्स रिटर्न हेयर जी फोर्टी spherical abrasion point positively aspheric cornea and instead of studying each and every abrasion you can just see the rms value rms value is root mean square and root mean square is the sum of all the abrasions in the central 4 mm area kaise karte hain astigmatism the spherical aberrations all these are squared sab ko square karke add karke unka square root nikal dete <coughs> so the rms of high order aberrations is what is important <coughs> of the central cornea this is very important for implanting multifocal iols and to know the visual the optical performance of the cornea this rms value is very important it should be below 0.35 rms that is very important and this rms value comes out through the other serious also then in pentacam we have the cataract preop usme it is important to know the difference in the anterior corneal curvature and the posterior if there is any difference in the anti uh, the if the posterior cornea is contributing to the astigmatism नॉर्मल टोपोग्राफ से सिर्फ एंटीरियर एस्टिकमेटिज्म आएगी समटाइम्स द पोस्टीरियर कॉर्निया आल्सो कंट्रीब्यूट्स टू एस्टिकमेटिज्म सो वी शुड डू अ टोमोग्राफी टू फाइंड आउट इफ देयर इज अ डिफरेंस वी कैन आल्सो गेट दिस स्फेरिकल एबरेशन वैल्यू ओवर हियर सो देयर इज अ पॉजिटिवली स्फेरिक कॉर्निया 0.274 
we should implant a negatively aspheric IOL of a similar asphericity, negative asphericity. Okay, na? So you should know, for example, an Alcon IQ lens has a negative asphericity of 0.2. Uh, the technus has a negative a specificity of 0.28 so instead of uh, alcon we will uh, go for a technus lens because this will match this positive a specificity then uh, we uh, one important thing is the gull strand ratio or the sagittal back to front ratio this 82% this is not important for cataract. This is important for post myopic refract uh, refractive surgery in which we have done LASIK. The, it is the ratio of the back, radius of curvature of the back over the radius of curvature of the front and expressed in percentage. It's a usually 83%. In myopic LASIK, it reduces, it's very sensitive. Even if it reduces by two, a factor of two, 80% which means that some myopic ablation has been done. Now coming to the serious, we'll go slightly faster now. <clears throat> Since you have understood the basic maps, serious is the other machine and what is, why is it different and more and better and more important is because it has got dual system. What is serious? It is the brightest star in the night sky and it is a binary star. It's two stars orbiting around a common barycenter. So it has got two things. It has got the shine flu camera also. It has got placido disc also. It has got 22 rings of placidos and a shine flu camera. And uh, now they have come up with Sirius Plus, which is a higher resolution and much, many more points are mapped not just one lakh, more than two lakh points are mapped. And it is, it covers 12 millimeter, pura cornea, it covers the whole of the cornea. So just hold on. Sorry about that. This is the Pentacam and this is the Sirius CSO. Now, what is the difference? What is the advantage of the Sirius? It does not require a dark room. When uh, those who have seen a pentacam being done, we have to turn off all the lights. Sometimes there is a black cloth which is given. Stray light will just uh, make the readings very bad. So the whole machine and the patient is draped in a black cloth and then the thing is taken. Even with the pentacam we have in our department, a very large black cloth was given. But we were able to, you know, it is in the basement. So we were able to all, cut all stray light and a very dark room was arranged for that. Very fast acquisition of images. It just takes two seconds. It is dual mode, which means both Placido and Shine Flu. There is a neural learning machine. This is a, uh, the Sirius is an intelligent machine. The more topography, to tomography values are fed into it, the more uh, smart it will become. We don't need to memorize all these data. How much kitna K max hona chahiye, how much should be the RMS value, how much should be the Q value. It it will just it all the normative data is fed into it. The more you do it in your population and the more uh, intelligent it will get. And uh, uh, you just it will just give you the confidence limits. There's advanced computer algorithm for prog progression detection. It also gives a tear film analysis, mimography, IOL power calculation, pupillography, glaucoma, and so many things. The Sirius Plus has got the added advantage that it, uh, instead of just 21,000 points uh, front surface, it takes so 1,50,000 points from the anterior surface. It has got advanced keratoconus screening and can visualize the lipid layer and tear meniscus, meniscus height can also be studied. So again, it has got the, all the basic maps. This is the pack. Now, one difference in this, uh, the, the notation of uh, Sirius is that it does not use Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian is X and Y. It uses polar coordinates, which means this is zero. 
this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, this is again zero. Okay. So, this is written in thickness is 709, 3.9 millimeters at 218 degrees. So, 0, 90, 180, somewhere around is 218. And here, 3.79 millimeters from the central over here. So it gives distance from the center and which axis and it will give you. Now, the same thing in pentacam would have been a minus x axis and minus y axis. It just goes uh, degrees and distance from the corneal apex. So that is just a matter of notation. It also gives the Kleist Wilson scale that is again the same red is the hot area and the blue is the cold, cold area. Again, it gives the tangential maps just like uh, pentacam elevation map. Now, the elevation map of Sirius is totally different from elevation map of pentacam. Pentacam will always take a sphere, best fit, say, unless you feed into it that you want to take a ellipsoid. In uh, Sirius, it will always take a best fit toric A sphere, but that is a toric ellipsoid. So, real elevations are not derived from a series and you don't need to go into detail about the elevation. It will just have an elevation subtraction or the uh, delta Z or ye delta Z of Ismail Khawa like it is 3.79 millimeters at 218, same place over here. Okay. Then refractive equivalent map. This is the same, which is uh, the, we have the true K. True K is refractive equivalent. It is equivalent to that of true K of pentacam. Okay. So the reference, so what is the difference between basic different pentacam gives a best fit sphere. This is best fit toric A sphere. It measures elevations from the best fit sphere. It measures the uh, delta Z that is the third axis point by point difference. But these are not true elevations and they have no uh, recommended cutoff. But here you have cutoff. That is, if the elevation increased by more than 10 micron in six months, that is progression like that. Sagittal map, similarly to what we have a sagittal map of pentacam, a refractive map, it, it can also give you refractive map of anterior and posterior. This is the anterior, 52, 52, posterior minus seven, minus six. So this uh, um, uh, added to this will give you the tr uh, ten, uh, true, uh, this uh, refractive equivalent map, the difference between these two. This is the normal printout of series one. Here you can see, first of all, it is how much it is, how much coverage of the cornea is there, how much is it, how, if it is centered well, if the coverage is good, then you have horizontal visible iris diameter, pupil, where is it located? What is the size? At the apex, what is the thick, thickness? Anterior chamber depth is central corneal thickness plus anterior chamber depth is equal to this. Okay. Volume of the uh, anterior chamber, iridocorneal angle, horizontal anterior chamber uh, diameter corneal volume. So all these things are the same, which are derived in pentacam. Here the, we have an option over here that we can have either P or Q value or E value. We can change it according to our own preference. We can have the Q values here. Then it gives the RMS. RMS, there is one difference in series. It not just gives the RMS, it gives RMS per area. Suppose the root mean square is of the central four millimeters. Okay. Usme root mean square point three nikal di. Lekin usne four millimeters ke liye. So it divides it by that area of how much you're taking. That means root mean square per unit area. So that is more specific. Now you don't have to memorize these values. It will, this is the normal scale. This is normal green. This is borderline yellow and then red becomes significant. This is 95% confidence limits. Okay. So you, it will just show a red triangle where it is significant. 
This is just to show K1, K2 from here. It comes here in series. The back surface from here comes here. K max, it is apex. So how do you compare the two? The thinnest local, it is thinnest local over here. Instead of showing X and Y coordinate, it shows one millimeter at 230 degrees. So that means inferior cornea, 0, 90, 180, and 230, and one millimeter from the center. So inferior. Similarly, Q value, getting here, you can get Q values from here. It gives Q values in different, uh, this thing. This is six millimeter anterior posterior, eight millimeter anterior posterior. So it gives Q values from the center to the periphery. This is just a video to show in keratoconus how it uh, looks. This is the serious two. Now you can see here, let me just pause it here. Oh, wait. You can all see these red triangles. So everything is going haywire. This is a case of keratoconus. You can see that there's so much of inferior steepening, posterior ectasia, thinning of the cornea, and everything is in showing reds. So this is a case of keratoconus. And last classification, if you click on this double click to expand, what it will show is this. You can see here the probability that there is 99% probability, probability that is keratoconus. If it was borderline, it could have come like this. If it have been other, which some, either the patient is not cooperative or some er erroneous or corneal opacity is there, then it would have come there. If it have been a laser operated, it would have come here. A normal would have come here. So this is how it is built inside the machine. If you don't understand all these things, you can just click on any one of these things and it will give uh, uh, the explanation, thickness, K-max, Goldstrand ratio. Now the difference in the back to front ratio of Pentacam with Sirius is, in Pentacam, it is back to front. But the back is, back ka radius is the numerator and front ka radius is denominator. So it is 0.83% uh, or 0.83. In Sirius, it is, uh, anterior to posterior, the front to back. So it is 1.2, 1.9, 1.18 to 1.22. So it is just the reverse because they have to do something differently. Goldstrand ratio there, here it is 1.18. Normal Goldstrand ratio is this. And then everything is explained here. If you, if you are stuck anywhere, you can just read these help, uh, files in the machine itself. Similarly, flat, steep, everything is mentioned here. Shape indices. Now, uh, this is RMS per square, uh, area. And see, this is gone in the red. Refractive analysis. Then keratoconus screening. What is SI? It is the symmetry index symmetry index means it takes a three millimeter area how much asymmetry is from a three millimeter top of that area and bottom of that three millimeter uh, zone so the, that symmetry means inferior curvature is more then central surround index is it takes a even larger area of six millimeter three to six millimeter Okay, and this is front, front, back, back, FFBB. EI is the ectasia index. This ectasia index is through the elevations, front, back, thickness, how much the minimum thickness is. Thick, uh, TSI is thickness, uh, a symmetry index of corneal thickness, how much is the from superior to inferior, and TI is thickness increase. TI is thickness increase. So there is a thickness increase from center to periphery. So you don't have to memorize these values. These, it will just show the normative data and how much it is outside the normal. 
one very good thing there in this machine is that it gives what is known as enantiomorphism enantiomorphism means comparing the two eyes now this is od right eye these are all the maps gaussian anterior map tangential map posterior map corneal thickness map everything is there okay true net curvature map everything is there if you go to the this bilateral summary see it will give both the uh, right and left and it will indicate the cone so this, you can see how symmetrical it is an enantiomorphism is like twins so we can compare the two eyes and we can know that it, yes it is a keratoconus and all these markers are red so this is a case of clear cut case of keratoconus both eyes and here the thickness minimum is 363 is 380 is a very advanced case similarly it has got the pachymeter increase map one important one very uh, useful thing it has is aberrometry it will give you not just the um, high order aberrations it will give you the actual corneal the quality of the image which will be formed with, uh, when light goes through this cornea which is through two things point spread function and modular transfer function and it will create uh, an image of what the person would see in through such a cornea now cornea is not only the refractive surface in the eye the lens is also there but considering that if uh, how much uh, blurring is caused by the cornea it will create this image and uh, it will uh, create what is uh, it will give you the point spread and the modular transfer function it, from that it creates this this is uh, again just this is the printout of the sirius plus which is the uh, higher resolution um, uh, the advanced machine of sirius here you can see thickness is 437 gold strand ratio has is more in the plus side and uh, everything is in the red and it is classification is keratoconus clear cut case of keratoconus right eye and all the parameters are here in this so it uh, takes into accounts the symmetry index the bcv now it has uh, um, the bcv is the three scientists name some italian scientist bellucci i don't know i've forgotten but they, they have discontinued this index rms the root mean square symmetry index thickness everything is into the algorithm and it comes out with either a normal keratoconus suspect abnormal and now they have added myopic post op also you can also plan in plan uh, the uh, intax the uh, corneal rings for keratoconus it will give you exactly which axis and what diameter you have to uh, implant those rings to get flattening of the cone then there are many other uses of sirius the the intax planning aberrometry the what anybody can tell me what opd is optical path difference very good very nice who is this very nice optical path deviation or optical path difference and this is derived from point spread function which is how much the uh, 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 image is uh, the uh, how much brightness is transferred and mtf is modular transfer function is how much contrast is transferred from the image to the uh, from the object to the image so it gives a visual simulation then it can measure the pupillography now ab isme pupillography it measures the pupil size in pentacam it always is done in the dark so pupillography if you take the pupil it will be a scotopic pupil here since the myers are illuminated it it will calculate the pupil size in varying intensity of the myer uh, this thing it can calculate scotopic mesopic and photopic pupil size then iol calculation it has got all the formulas for post refractive surgery toric iols glaucoma it can calculate the anterior chamber depth volume angle corrected iop and also the surface ocular surface non invasive bot and mimography so iol calculation i don't think we should go into that 
glaucoma su- summary how much correction you need to do what is the corneal thickness and uh, angle of the anterior chamber pupillography the intensity of light of those uh, placido rings is increased to get mesopic or photopic pupil size and dynamic it sees the actual reaction of the pupil mimography what is done is it takes the infrared picture of the mimovian gland and you can actually mark like this is the picture you can mark with this and get actually how much percentage mimovian loss is there tear film analysis is the non invasive but what is but breakup time yeah here film breakup time so it you don't need to put fluorescein ye jo green hai ye to is just a simulation it creates a green to give you a, a simulation of as if fluorescein has been put jaise you ask the patient to blink once or twice and then keep the eye open and you take the machine to that uh, uh tfm analysis or but the first meyer distortion which it picks up that is the beauty and it doesn't take one it keeps on taking till it sees that random spot and two or three or four times the random random spot of uh, dryness appears and it takes average and gets the non invasive breakup time then you can also do comparison means progression of keratoconus you don't need to know the absolute b- b- values if you do uh, keratoconus screening at day 1 and after 6 months and if you go to the comparison it will show a red flag yes the thickness has is now red flag something needs to be done the elevations are red flag the ectasia is red flag so everything it will do on its own through the normative data because it's a very intelligent machine this is how it will show the symmetry index and rms area all these things it can give you the exact progression from this is 2018 2019 through one year how much difference it has occurred okay now it is the quiz time first of all uh is there any uh, is a very exhaustive class anybody has got some question something which sir, you... uh, there are about 6 uh, 7 doubts that have come okay. up okay yeah yeah so if, uh, if you can just see the chat box i have uh, sent all of them to you or i can uh, announce them one by one if you want wait 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 i'll just see the chat box better to announce huh, huh. Yeah. so uh, the first question okay. was whether the q value changes with age very good question now what changes in the cornea is anybody what changes with age ab ye batao tum log batao anybody what measurement of the cornea changes with age endothelium uh, <laughs> we are talking about to- topography and tomography <laughs> so anything any change in the astigmatism ये तो बहुत इजी क्वेश्चन है यंग पर्सन यूजली विद द रूल एस्टिक मैटर विद रूल टू अगेंस्ट रूल विद टू अगेंस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेशर ऑफ द आईलेट्स सो द एस्टिक मैटरिज्म चेंजेस फ्रॉम विद जनरली विद टू एन अगेंस्ट इवन इफ इट इज नॉट विद इन यंग एज इफ इट वाज विदाउट एनी एस्टिक मैटरिज्म इट स्टिल गोस अगेंस्ट द रूल इन ओल्ड एज यू कैन सी सो मेनी You, you do uh, b- 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 biometry for uh, IOL. More than sixty percent will be against the rule in senile cataracts. But does the Q value have a, uh, the astigmatism have any effect on the Q value? Would it have an effect on the Q value? Q value is just an eccentricity, and unless the cornea is damaged. by injury or some other disease or in infection the q value never changes the asphericity of the cornea never ever changes okay isko aise bhi samjho cornea will always remain positively aspheric throughout life yeah whatever its asphericity is throughout life 
what changes is the lens aspherosity the crystalline lens is usually negatively aspheric the peripheral part is very much flat in a uh, in a fake in a crystalline lens with age with nucleus hardening it becomes positively aspheric okay even if there is no cataract it becomes positively aspheric this is the reason why with increase age there is a decrease in the contrast sensitivity you why a person is not able to see that clearly even if it he is 6 by 6 is because in young age the positive aspherosity of the cornea is neutralized by the negative aspherosity of the lens and the lens itself also becomes positively aspheric so whenever the pupil is larger in size beyond the age of 50 years the patient, the person will have less contrast or decrease in the contrast sensitivity that is the reason because cornea doesn't change the lens changes okay. next question the next question is uh, uh, one of the residents wants to know the posterior keratoconus images in serious uh see the as i told you uh, in serious posterior keratoconus uh, will just show as a keratoconus the isolated or the form frosty keratoconus will not be able to be, uh, we will not be able to see in a normal sagittal or uh, elevation map because it doesn't take elevate uh, the best fit sphere it takes a toric ellipsoid so it just doesn't uh, have the uh, uh, and the thing the the software for that but the software is already it is already incorporated even if there is some keratoconus suspect it will show in the posterior surface and it will show a red flag but there is no point trying to make out through the maps because the elevation subtraction map has no value in serious so uh, so the next question is what is crs in serious crs Yes. CRS. I have no idea. CRS. Has anybody read about it? What is it? No. If you can tell me the full form. CRS. So the person who asked the question, they can come online and uh, yeah, ask it again maybe. So it was mentioned in one of your slides. okay then it must be very important because even i have i must have you know just taken it wait 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 let me see kaha tha yeah i remember that era crs okay uh, what i'll do is i'll find out and let you know okay i'll put it on the group okay so um, one of the interesting questions is the other uh, iuls used for routine Uh, resident cases are mm. they negatively aspheric yes nowadays what what whatever iuls we are getting they are all negatively aspheric but the negative aspherosity is different for different uh, make or the different um, companies of iul the negative aspherosity of, of which i know of the hoya lenses have got least negative aspherosity point i think 0.12 or 0.16 then comes the alcon which is 0.2 to 0.22 and then last is technus which is 0.28 then there are aspheric neutral iuls also in which the spherical aberration is zero that means the central and peripheral powers are equal so aspherically neutral iuls and that they are made by bosch and lom now what is the use of aspheric neutral iuls is post refractive surgery when you don't know what the spherical aberration or you don't have a topograph to know the exact uh, sphericity of the cornea then you should not um, uh, because cornea uh, about uh, 80% of the corneas are positively aspheric but a very small number of corneas are neg- by birth negatively aspheric also those corneas will do very badly with a negative aspheric iul so for if you don't know then you should implant usually implant a 
aspheric neutral in a post refractive surgery so uh, so the next question is can serious be used for post pk astigmatism to correct post pk astigmatism no to judge or like you know measure post pk astigmatism yes why not you can find out which is the steep if you have given interrupted sutures you can find out the steep axis but the thing is in post pk even if your manual k will give you good enough results because the cornea itself what we are uh, judging with the serious is a very high order abrasion but in penetrating keratoplasty there is so much of uh, primary astigmatism because of the sutures that we are not concerned about the higher order abrasion we are more concerned about the irregular and uh, the high astigmatism which we can do with a normal keratometer also uh, because uh, once you do a penetrating keratoplasty the biggest bugbear is astigmatism and a uh, uh, irregular cornea and it is so much irregular that um, usually uh, doing a serious will not give you too much of a clue as to what next to be done about the irregularity so uh, the next uh, question is what is the difference between thinnest local and apex thinnest local will never be at the apex thinnest local is the thinnest part of the cornea in keratoconus it will be below the apex because it is usually inferior thinning okay so apex is the corneal apex center geometric center of the cornea it is not the pupil center okay and uh, uh, then there is a question that uh, if the cornea is thinnest in the center then how come the refractive power is highest uh, over there refractive power is highest yes cornea is th thickness is uh, see the thin thickness of the cornea is not related to its power it is the curvature of the cornea which is giving the power not the thickness why the cornea is thinnest is because the posterior radius of curvature is 6.7 and the anterior radius of curvature is 7.8 okay so the anterior is flat posterior is more curved so the center cornea is thinnest and the peripheral cornea is that will not that doesn't mean that the cornea will be very Uh, a thin cornea will be a flat cornea it is more related with the curvature now the power of the cornea in the center what i am say what i was discussing the prolateness it doesn't mean that a prolate cornea will have a maximum power in the center because of the positive asphericity of the cornea the power at the mid periphery will be more than the center okay that is the thing when we do a myopic ablation we are totally changing the q value and that causes problems in uh, contrast sensitivity so thickness is not related with power it's the radius of curvature which is related to power and the q value okay maybe i'll uh, i'll read out the exact question once again hmm. so uh, the question that they are trying to ask is that where the cornea is thinner in the center how the refractive power gets more and more there in keratoconus uh, that's not mentioned in the question sir oh keratoconus then they must be thinking about keratoconus only because th th there is a, it is ectatic it is above the it is very steep because then okay wo protrude kar raha hai na aage so the radius of curvature is further getting decreased in that localized area thick the thickness or thinness is no way related with the power of the cornea and uh, last question is a follow up to the no, one thing sorry 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 now it's a good question in that way that if you have a thin cornea like um, i think uh, some of the residents will uh, realize if you have a thin cornea and in a tangential map there is flattening in that area okay a thin cornea with flattening what would it be what could it be usually a thin cornea will be ectatic and high power but a thin uh, 
a thin cornea with flattening which means there is a facet or a previous corneal uh, in uh, infection which has led to fibrosis and flattening so you can have a nebular corneal opacity if you look carefully a nebular corneal opacity there will be cornea will be thin and it will be flat one of the residents has answered that it could also be post lasic post lasic thin cornea with ha huh? obviously because the anterior ablation is there now i think we can go to the quiz mere wo questions jo quiz just the last question is that does the artificial eye will also become positive aspheric with time sudo fake sudo fake eye will yes it doesn't change uh, all the conventional iols before the negative aspheric iols were positively aspheric till uh, i think the negative aspherosity of the iol was first discovered in late 90s that we have to have negatively aspheric iols because then once this tomography came then they realized that the cornea is positively aspheric till before that they were all conventional iols which were highly positively aspheric okay so quiz time first question uh so please tell them to uh, give write the answer and not shout the answer so that uh, uh, nahi, nahi, whoever nahi, nahi. right first gets the prize jo usko usko pehle click kar dega na wo option ko okay read the question very carefully first oh this is a visual thing okay what is the diagnosis आराम से देखो बताओ एनी आंसर पेलोसिड मार्जिनल डिजेनरेशन यू हैव टू टाइप योर आंसर यू डोंट हैव टाइप योर आंसर the answers are coming uh, they like uh, in the yeah, chat box i think saurav mahajan has given the first answer <laughs> correct siddharth mahajan nahi no, but uh, saurav mahajan has given it immediately right okay so now can you uh, just unmute saurav and he will explain why you can uh, you have to tell me why it is posterior keratoconus malign uh, embryo hmm malign embryo is showing yes the elevation map is showing yes okay So that is not just the only thing. Okay, I I will explain. I will explain. Just to mute yourself. This is a sagittal map, which is totally normal, and everything is looking very good. Forty two, forty one, sagittal anterior map. These are the anterior elevations, all looking very good. Slight astigmatism is there. Okay, thickness all good. No inferior thinning. Everything is all right. But you see here. the posterior elevation map so the, there is a localized elevation over here see the q value anterior q value is just minus 0.03 see the posterior q value minus 0.55 okay this has become more q value see, see the bellin ambrosio anterior is all normal posterior there is this and the difference the enhanced ectasia showing a posterior ectasia so anteriorly it's everything is very normal but posteriorly there is an ectasia so this is what is known as post keratoconus posticus circumscriptus or form fristi this is uh, the person is 57 year old and uh, he doesn't he didn't know about it 
but suppose this person would have been uh, 20 year old going for myopic uh, ablation for a minus 2 diopter he would have landed up with a frank keratoconus in his young age so this is the importance of tomography agar uski topography karte placido disc to ye aa jata uska central thickness measure kar lete ultrasonic pachymeters we would have got 520 okay and uh, laser could have been done and then he would have had a keratoconus so that is the importance okay next and you can see the kpd is 1.4 keratometric power deviation difference in the true net and the uh, simulated k next okay the next question is this after myopic lasik ablation there is no change in q value but change in aspherosity q value becomes more negative but no change in aspherosity q value becomes less negative and positive aspherosity increases cornea may be made truly aspheric So the answers are there in the um, chat box. Ah, I'm seeing. And I think Rohan Agashe has given the right answer because Kayu ne to two three lik diya. Two two options. Um, Ayushi ne pehle diya hai sabse pehle Ayushi Verma. Ayushi Verma C okay C lik diya okay that's why I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay 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 so Ayushi Verma has given three so. Q value becomes less negative. Why? Because after myo, because central. Acha, we will tell you. Ayushi, come on uh, online and uh, please explain. So, because we are decreasing the steepness of the cornea in myopic laser ablation to correct that, so the Q hmm. value uh, be less negative, more towards yeah. cornea. Hmm. Why the positive aspherosity increases? Why the positive aspherosity increases? So the periphery of the cornea will uh, the will re refract the rays more. So anyway, the periphery was refracting more. The cornea is always all already positively aspheric. And you have made the center flat. Okay, mm -hmm. right? Nah? So the relative difference between the center and the periphery increases. So the cornea will become highly positively aspheric. so what is the clinical significance a myopic ablation which is done more than four or five diopters the patient will not be happy with his vision very much happy because of decrease in the contrast and change in the a lot of change in the q value you must have heard about q lasik q lasik is nothing but a, a computer algorithm which tries to preserve the q value for A myopic laser. How it tries to minimize the effect on the Q values by changing the size of the ablation zone. But at Q value beyond four to five diopter of ablation, there will definitely be a change. You cannot uh, hide or uh, you cannot run away from changing the Q value because that is why many people are now doing uh, uh, in ICLs. instead of doing uh, uh, this, this thing because the crispness and the vision clarity of vision with the icl is much more however it is a in invasive or intraocular procedure but people now they try to do more of q lasik second is a topography guided laser there are two things um, uh, the topography guided and the wave front guided okay so we just i have got uh, so my, uh, here it is the myopic lasik you are ablating this part central part so increase positive spherical evidence central thinning and the ratio of the now if you do a gulstrand ratio it will be less than even a change of from 83 to 80 will uh, it will be diagnostic of um, myopic lasik or a reverse of gulstrand ratio of more than 1.2 
usually what i have seen it for about 3 to 4 adapters of correction it comes to around 1.29 1.3 here it is the colson ratio is 1.29 this is a myopic ablation see this this is the island which has been flattened after uh, the ablation so the cornea is very thin over here 444 the power is very less over here in this area okay so here it calculates it comes out as myopic post op you don't have to you know worry about these values it will just give you the diagnosis myopic post op and k1 k steep uh, the k2 is still some residual astigmatism is there even after the myopic ablation okay this is the other eye similarly this island of Uh, ablation is there in the center. Will stand ratio is one point two eight, myopic post op, and the center is so flat, forty forty, and the, as it goes in the periphery, it's forty five, forty seven, forty two, highly positively aspheric cornea. So in after hyperopic laser ablation, this part is ablated. Hypermetropia, not much are not many people are doing. This part is ablated, so the cornea becomes like this. There's a gutter. and then it is highly curved and then there is a cut up a lot of ablation is done this part becomes very thin so after hyperopic ablation uska reverse ho jata hai it becomes hyperprolate center is very much curved and the periphery is very much flattened in hyperopic ablation isko <laughs> in hyperopic ablation we can make the cornea truly is yeah most that time more 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 can you just mute whoever is i muted uh, some kid was there uh -huh. okay so that is it i think most of uh, anybody is awake or everybody is sleeping should residents are there <laughs> pankaj is awake no nah, i am awake are uh, you are there i am so honored No, no, I am there since <laughs> beginning. Yeah, it is my interest. Mm -hmm. uh, Pankaj has, uh, I think, well done, very, very well done for this kind of tomography and topography, mm -hmm. and uh, cornea or the topography. Topo, Vishal is also here. <laughs> Excellent class. <laughs> so after OCT, I think topography or the tomography is the second tool which will yes. enhance your practice and save you for unexpected results in yes. your local common practice. Yes. Maybe a cataract, maybe a infection, or maybe any patient who is coming to you and not happy. Yes. I, my one suggestion is that whenever patient is not happy, please try to do refraction with strict arthroscopy by yourself. Yes. any of the things as pankaj said the optical path deviation can be picked up by simple strict retinoscopy in a relatively yes. dim illuminated room or something and whenever suspicion is there you mm -hmm. can go for further investigations by tomography or topography or combined ones now the combined ones is coming which is giving you a gross picture in which you can actually see the anterior surface is very important for the total reflection but anterior and posterior combined gives you the quality of vision yes. so both are required and whenever you see some suspicion is there as i do all patients if you do a strict retinoscopy with slightest of the suspicion you will mm -hmm. find out that definitely there is something happening with the cornea presumably exactly. that the lens and other things are not there having any optical deviations but the lens deviations can be picked up by slit lamp easily the mm -hmm. corneal is not you cannot judge by sit lamp examination so that is very very important yes and uh, another thing as the pankaj said for the refractive surgery that uh, all kind of posterior keratoconus if missed can actually have a complications and sometime we see that they are very very important and uh, practically now everybody is doing shampla but my experience of uh, almost 23 years of topography and around 10 years of this shampla and topography i still feel that uh, topography is very very important even with the tomography so now the newer machines are coming with the combined thing Dual, yes so that is very important you can't rely alone on pentacam because it misses something and sometime you find the things are there 
everything do some extrapolation be it the topography be it the pentacam or shemflag image because in shemflag the best is fit sphere or the thickness are taken into the prime consideration so there are many cases in which anti and posterior surfaces are normal but because thickness is very low mm, then they yes, give suspicions right. yes then they give suspicions or they create a doubt in you but for refractive surgery it is important whenever thickness is low you don't do refractive surgery and as pankaj has correctly said you can go for fake lenses mm. but for normal patients the thin corneas then you need to give instructions particularly not to rub eyes because thinness mm. and rubbing over the eyes you can develop keratoconus so yes. the, there are so many things but i think everybody will be feeling sleepy and <laughs> waiting for dinner so i'll wind up here no, no. but and your you, all the points which you have said they are the juice Real the extract of <laughs> very Now, nice, Vishal very very well put. Very important. <laughs> so, so yes. if any questions are not there, I think we can wind up. Yes. And yes. thank you very much, Pankaj, for the very detailed overview of the topography yes. and tomography. Yes. Thank you. And thank with you. the very clear instructions and uh, observations and the simulations that what are the things you can think in the life under the sea level. Everybody knows. that every mm-hmm. platform now we are not <laughs> moving on platforms you see yes. how much high is from the sea level yes so that is how you can remember the normal life situations and understand yes thank you very much and thank, thank you everybody you. and thank you all the panelists for being here and thank you pankaj sir for the great class and looking forward to the next uh, class reading the reports uh, that will be on visual fields and the dates will be announced uh, very soon and all the grand prize winners uh, will have their gifts delivered to their departments or their house very soon thank you so much thank you vishal thank you rs excellent class excellent class pankaj uh, thank you sir <laughs> thank you boss <laughs> puri 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 class attend ki aaj maine are wah maza aa gaya i am honored i am honored majla <laughs> liya now you can ha uh, ayo thank you good night everyone Pankaj, may may I congratulate you? Thank you, sir. Are you nice, sir? This beautiful <laughs> class and your new venture. Yes, sir. Thank you. First of next month. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm definitely I'm hundred percent sure this will be the golden period of SMS. No, nee, sir. Golden. So you have started it already, sir. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Sir, golden. Your period was. No, no, no. We will just continue. Be, Try to continue. Be, it will be followed by. another very capable person yes sir so i hope uh, uh, resident will be and the staff member will be after you to retain you there and not to <laughs> run away from this nahi 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 i am here only sir yes sir thank you sir thank you because i will not be here so accept thank my congratulations thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir Manjula ji, I think we can stop the uh, live and recording now. Okay, doctor. Thank you, doctor Sonal, for. Thank you,